So this lesson is uh, about static electricity and the forces acting between two uh, charges. Um, you have seen person with an static electricity hair maybe sometimes when they use a slide on the playground or, um, or maybe if you rub the balloon or hair knob on their hair, they, they will feel electric, electrically statically. Um, they will repel each other. So it's caused by the excessive amount of um, charge or lack of charge. So if there is not enough uh, electrons on the hair, then it will repel because there's too much positive charge. And if there's too many electrons, it will repel because there's too many electrons. Um, but uh, there are electric field lines around every charge. And the electric field lines uh, around the positive charge, they're like a positive person. They um, eliminate the, the light away from them, right? So it's the same electric field lines coming out of the positive charge and negative person getting into that negative person charge. Um, in the model that we used to see where you have an atom and you have electrons in a circular motion, um, not exactly the right model, the, the electrons are in field clouds and they only can be detected when they're detected then you know where it is, but they move like so fast that it's like in the cloud. Um, then you will, you might or we will see some questions related to the pith ball. I want you to know that this device, like this one, is called pith ball. And when you bring the charge to the pith ball, if it's not charged, it will not react. But as soon as you charge it, um, or maybe it will be attracted because electrons can move away if it was. So if electrons were, if this is positively charged, the electrons were, uh, they will move closer to the positive charge, it will attract. But as soon as some electrons jump over, this becomes positively charged. Those electrons can move away from this one and then they will be repelling each other. So this is the pith ball. Um, also, we, in this section, we often use uh, the charge of the proton, positive 1.6 times to negative 19, measured in coulombs, the charge has letter Q, and measured in coulombs, neutron has no charge, electron has exactly the same charge, but negative. Uh, the mass of the proton, the mass of the uh, neutron, almost the same. They're not quite the same, same, but they're almost the same. And a mass of the electron is much smaller. It's 10 to the negative 28. This one's 10 to the negative 24. And this one is in gram. Um, so to calculate the forces between two charges, we're going to be using Coulomb's law. And if there is two opposite charge, if there are two, two opposite charges, they will be attract using. Um, they will be having an attraction force, or they will be repelling each other force. Um, but it's the same force. So one attracts another with the same force as this one attracts this one, or this one repels that one with the same exact force as this one repels this one because there is one formula for each one of them, of those cases. So the force that can be calculated by the Coulomb's law. And I'm sure this formula looks to you a little bit familiar if you think about the gravitational constant force. Um, the gravitational force between where there is a gravitational constant G. In this case, we don't have G. We have Coulomb's constant, which is um, almost 9, 10 to the 9. And so if I want to calculate the force between two charges, if I have charge 1, charge 2, maybe in some Coulomb numbers, and uh, gravitational constant ten, 9, 10 to the 9th, divided by the distance squared, I can find the force acting one on the other. Um, and then uh, talking about the coulombs, uh, when you think about um, when you go to the store and you buy a dozen eggs, you don't buy an egg, you buy a dozen eggs um, because nobody buys an egg. So um, people say go and buy one or two or three dozen of eggs, right? And you know that is um, dozen is a twelve. So when you um, talk about the coulomb, coulomb is like a bucket of electrons, and this is how many electrons in one bucket. So if one somebody says go get me one coulomb of electrons, you know you have to go get this many electrons. So that would be one coulomb. Um, but if I wanted to know, um, so if I have this many coulombs. Um, I can always figure figure out how many electrons to make that many coulombs. 
and a uh, number of electrons can be only a discrete number, so like a one, a two, and three, and four, so an integer number of, of electrons. So the coulomb is just a bucket that consists of some number of electrons, and this is the number that is per one coulomb. Then um, k constant, the coulomb's constant, depend on the electric permittivity, and this this number in vacuum is 885, 10 to negative 12, um, but in different mediums, so if, if it's vacuum or air, it would be almost the same. So I can use 9, 10 to the 9, but if I do the same experiment in the water or any liquid or any other gas, uh, my K will depend on that material. So, But we don't have to worry in regular physics about it because we don't talk about different materials that we place our electric charges in. Um, please watch the videos because the videos that are posted in the lesson or in the links right here will help you understand everything better. Then um, the current. The current can only go through conductors, not insulators. Sometimes can go through semiconductors. What makes conductor uh, a conductor or insulator and insulator a semiconductor? Semiconductor. Conductors have uh, only one uh, valence electron on their outer shell in the atom. So uh, because it has more space to fit more electrons, electrons can jump from one atom to another. And when they jump from one to another, electric current is floating. And when the electric current is floating, it's almost the same as you jumping from one step to another, um, you get hot. So it, when the current is floating, it produces the heat around itself. So conductor will have only one valence electron in the periodic table. All the elements that have one electron will be conductors. Um, insulators um, have five to eight electrons. They already have too many electrons. They cannot fit another one. And semiconductors have four electrons. Under certain conditions, temperatures, um, they they can conduct electricity, so they will allow electron to jump from one to another. So that would and it depends on which position on the uh, periodic table the the um, the element is located, and also when electron jumps from one to another, there's going to be always resistance. Resistance depends on the material that is used for current conduction. Um, there will be a few questions that I'm going to be solving for you, for you with electric um, charges and I've calculated the forces between them to show you some examples. So I'm going to do those questions separately. I just wanted to cover some um, some theory before uh, you, you jump into the lessons and problem solving. That is going to be a different video. So and then I'm going to post the videos after this one, what you should, you should watch for uh, practice problems. So if you have two charges that are opposite they will attract each other so the electric field will look something like this and if you have two charges that are uh, positive this electric field lines will be coming out but there will be like no electric field in between because they will repel each other if they were two negatives they would come into the charge but again there would be no uh, electric field in between and electric field um, depends on the force acting on the charge, the test charge. So imagine this to be a fountain. If this is a fountain, the water is bursting out of the fountain and you can place your finger here or here or here. Your finger would be the test charge, it would be the test charge. So if you place your finger here, you will feel more force over here because there's more electric field lines over here. But if you place your finger far away, you will have less force. You still have the same finger, so the same charge. Uh, but you will have less force on it because there's less electric field. So electric field lines uh, for electric field can be calculated by using this formula, which is force on the test charge. And um, we will be using um, voltage as a potential difference. So if you have one plate positively charged, the other plate negatively charged, this one is called high potential when it's positively charged. This one is called um, low potential when it's um, negatively charged. And if you have a proton placed closer to the positive charge, it has high potential energy because when you release it, that energy is going to be turned into the kinetic energy as it starts speeding up toward the negative. So if you take a proton, place it close to a high potential, you give it high potential energy and it will speed up uh, toward the 
the negative ch charge plate. If you have an electron and you push it all the way to the negative plate to the low potential and you release it, you give it high potential energy when it's at the low potential and it doesn't want to stay here next to the negatives. It wants to speed up to the positive. So it will turn its potential energy to the kinetic energy. And the potential difference, they use the words electric potential difference very often and they use the letter uh, V or U and that is voltage. So electric potential or the voltage in other words and measured in volts is the work done to move the charge from one position to another position that work is force times the distance so what force was acting on this charge to bring it all the way over here to travel this distance and the charge is the um the charge that they're talking about that it, that specific charge but the force over the charge is also electric field and um and then times the distance so the voltage is measured in volts and it's joules per coulomb how much work needed to move the charge and then work is equal to force times the distance but the force over the charge is equal to electric field times the distance um, so when a positive charge is placed i'm just going to read it quickly what i just said when the positive charge is placed in an electric field it moves with the direction of electric field lines and I forgot to mention this, that electric field lines are going to be directed from positive to negative. So your electric field lines are going to be everywhere from positive to negative. And um, electric, a, char a positive charge will move with the electric field lines because it wants to go from positive to negative and moves from higher potential to the lower potential. This one is called higher potential to the lower potential. It loses its electrical potential energy because it doesn't want to be here. It had potential energy and gains kinetic energy. When the negative charge is placed in the electric field line, it moves opposite the direction of electric field. So if you place the negative charge right here, it will move opposite the direction of the electric field because the electric field are moving down and the negative charge will want to go in the opposite direction. Um, it moves from lower potential to the higher potential and it loses electric potential energy when it moves from lower to higher, but it gains but, uh, kinetic energy when it moves this way. And um, I'm going to post you all the links for you to practice and also post the, um, the next videos that you should watch for practices.